Lesson number 102 is about absolute value inequalities. And absolute value, remember, is a distance from zero on a number line. It's always a positive number. So let's say, for instance, that we're looking for, we'll say the absolute value of 5. Absolute value bars are the straight vertical bars. The absolute value of 5, well, if we look at that, 5 is 5 units away from 0. So the absolute value of 5 is equal to 5. And if we take another one, let's take the absolute value of negative 2. The absolute value of negative 2, if we look at how many distance or how many units that is away from 0 on the number line, it's 1, 2 units. And our absolute value is always listed as a positive number. Now, let's look at some inequalities when we talk about absolute value. Here's our first part. We have the graph, the absolute value of x is greater than 2. This means we're looking for all values of x after we've taken the absolute value of them that would be greater than 2. So if we start with a table, let's look at some values that are greater than 2. Well, 2, if we take the absolute value of 2, the absolute value of 2 is equal to 2, and 2 is not greater than 2. So 2 is not greater than 2. And let's look at another one. We're looking for values that are greater than 2. So if we took the absolute value of 2.1, the absolute value of 2.1, that's going to be equal to 2.1. And 2.1 is greater than 2. So what we see here for our inequality is that we're going to look at all values that are bigger than 2. And the way we can indicate that is with an open circle, and we're going to be going to the right on our number line. So the first part of our answer is going to look like this. Now inequalities, are spe or inequalities of absolute value are special because we're looking at positive and negative values here. After we've taken the absolute value, they'll all turn positive. So let's look at a few more. Let's say we have the absolute value of, and we're going to use a different color this time, let's take the absolute value of negative 2. The absolute value of negative 2 is equal to positive 2, and 2 is not greater than or equal to 2. Well, 2 is not greater than 2. It is equal to 2. And then if we do the same thing, let's take the absolute value of negative 2.1. The absolute value of negative 2.1 is going to be equal to 2.1 and 2.1 is greater than 2. So we see the opposite thing. We see that if we go on the negative side, we're not going to have negative 2 as one of our answers, but we can move to the left. So our answer, our final answer, will have to look like this, where we're taking the absolute value of x, which is greater than 2, and we're graphing it. Let's look at another example. Here we have the absolute value of x is less than or equal to 3. And a good rule of thumb is to always start with the value that you have and see if that works. So let's make x equal to 3. If we say the absolute value of 3, the absolute value of 3 is equal to, well, it's equal to 3. And 3 is going to be less than or equal to 3. That's true. Let's try another one. Let's try 3.1 like we did before. The absolute value of 3.1 is equal to 3.1. But 3.1, 3.1 is not less than or equal to 3, so we can write our negated inequality. And we can see this time we're not going to be going to the right of 3. In fact, we know that there's a closed circle on 3, because 3 is less than or equal to 3. So we've got that closed circle. Let's try another value. Let's try, let's try negative 3. If we try negative 3, the absolute value of negative 3 is equal to 3. That's good, because 3 is less than or equal to 3. Perfect. 3 is less than or equal to 3. That's true. So we get another closed circle at negative 3. If we did the absolute value of negative 3.1, that's equal to positive 3.1. And positive 3.1, just like we had before, it's not less than or equal to 3. So we're not going to be going to the left from negative 3. We're not going to be getting smaller for our solution set. But we do have more possible answers here. Let's say x is 0. If x is 0, then we're going to have the absolute value of 0 is equal to 0, because it's 0 units from 0. And 0 is less than or equal to 3. That's true. So 0 is part of our solution set. But what about 1? The absolute value of 1 is equal to 1 which is less than or equal to 3. 
And if we looked at negative one, the absolute value of negative one is also equal to one, which is less than or equal to three. The way we show our solution set in here is everything between negative three and positive three with those values included of negative three and positive three will be part of our solution set. So we could draw it out like this. And if you have different colors, it shows up very well. If you don't have different colors, you could do this. You could raise it above the number line and bring your solution set together. Let's look at another one. This is our final answer for the absolute value of x is less than or equal to three. Here we have the absolute value of x is less than negative four. So let's say we take negative four, because a good rule of thumb again is to start with the value that you have. So if we take the absolute value of negative four, the absolute value of negative four, well, the absolute value of negative four is positive four, and positive four, well, that's not less than negative four. So we, we see that that doesn't happen. Let's try another one. Let's say negative 10, just a small value, the smallest value we have on our number line. The absolute value of negative 10 is 10. And 10 is not less than negative four. So what we see here is that there is no value of x where you can take its absolute value and have it be less than negative four. So for this one, we have no values or we have no solution. You wouldn't need to draw a number line. All you could do is write out no solution for this answer and you'd be correct because there's nothing that makes this inequality true. Let's look at another one. Here we have the neg negative, the absolute value of x is greater than or equal to negative three. So in order to do this one, let's go ahead and we're gonna undo the negative. We're gonna move the negative to the other side. And if we move the negative to the other side, we're gonna get the absolute value of x. And remember in inequalities where we move the negative to the other side of the equation, we've got to flip our inequality. So it's gonna be less than or equal to three. So we've got the absolute value of x is less than or equal to three. Let's use our value of three. The absolute value of three equals three and three is gonna be less than or equal to three. That's true, we can put a check mark there. So we know we're gonna have a closed circle on three. The question is, are we gonna get bigger or smaller? Or are we gonna go in the middle? Or are we gonna extend out from two sides like we've seen before? Let's do four. The absolute value of four is gonna be equal to four. Is four less than or equal to three? No, four is not less than or equal to three. That's not true. So we're not gonna be going to the right here. Let's try negative three. We have negative three, the absolute value of negative three is three, and three is less than or equal to three. Oh, that's very true. So we're gonna get a closed circle again on negative three. You can probably see the pattern that we have in this one. The absolute value of, let's say one. The absolute value of one is one, and one is less than or equal to three. That's true as well. So we're gonna be in the middle here. Our solution set will be everything between negative three and positive three, including those values. So here's what our answer would look like. We've got one more example for today. Negative, the absolute value of x minus two is greater than negative five. So in this one, we're trying to solve for the absolute value of x. So we've got to move the negative two to the other side of the equation. Let's do that by adding. We're gonna add two and we're gonna add two so we get negative, the absolute value of x is gonna be greater than negative five plus two. Negative five plus two is negative three. Then we bring the negative to the other side of our inequality. When we do that, we're gonna get the absolute value of x. We're bringing a negative to the other side, we're making it the opposite, so we've also gotta flip our inequality. It's gonna be less than three. So the absolute value of x is less than three. Let's start with three. Absolute value of three is equal to three. Is three less than three? No, three is not less than three. Three is three, so that's not true. We can make a negated inequality. It's sometimes nice to write an x as well, so you know that that's not a possibility. Three is not less than three. So let's try another one. Let's try 2.9. We have 2.9. The absolute value of 2.9 is equal to 2.9 and 2.9 is less than three, that's true. So what we can see is we're gonna have an open circle on three, and it looks like we're gonna be going to the left for sure, 
but let's see how far we go to the left. Let's take the absolute value of negative 3. The absolute value of negative 3 equals positive 3, and 3, again, is not less than 3, of course, so that's not true. But if we take the absolute value of negative 2.9, that's going to be equal to 2.9, and 2.9 is less than 3. That is true. So we can see again, we're going to have an open circle on negative 3, because this wasn't true. But everything less, or sorry, everything lit greater than negative 3 is in our solutions, and everything less than positive 3 is in our solutions. So we have an answer that looks like this again. We'll practice more of these absolute value inequalities during our lesson practice, page 433. Make sure you've got your notes complete, and I'll see you during our next class.